Okay, back again. I'm, I'm slowing down here because this is the pivotal period that's being marked, as you can tell by the text, because each one of these has to do with the rise of, of Constantine, and he essentially apes everything that Diocletian did. We saw his hypocrisy here when he was invoking Apollo to get the army to follow him. And then two years later, he's invoking Christ as some kind of vision that he got as if he were so special. And during that time, of course, he wins. And so, you know, when you're apostate or you're a faker and you win, you think that, you know, you're on the right side of history. You don't know that you're being set up for a fall. And so... He wins there, Milvian Bridge, 312. Arles First Council of Cannibalizing Christians in 314, which Constantine himself had convened, and that's the article that'll tell you about that council. Now, after that, there was, there was a lingering problem with a guy named Licinius and Maximus Dyer or Daza. He's called by both names. I didn't get into that, but there's a long story in there, but you can read it. If you just keep reading in that link there, okay? Because I cover all this this extra story, all right? Now you can say that that's all a play on what is written to the end of 315, but it continues. But the big focus in Revelation 17 isn't the politics; it's the unity of church and state as the Musterion. Musterion is a nickname for church in the New Testament, which Paul coined. In other words, first of all, i got to explain what Musterion means. We translate it with the word mystery, but that's not a good translation, really. But there's no other translation we can use. Musterion literally means doctrine known to the people inside a group that they all believe in okay and is unknown outside the group so like you might have heard the term Elysian mysteries that means the doctrines of the pagan cult called the Ele the Elysian cult Elysian fields was supposed to be the afterlife of the Romans and there were certain doctrines and rituals that you went through if you were part of the cult you would know what those were if you weren't part of the cult you wouldn't and that's why in English it's usually translated mysteries because it's talking about secret doctrines. Okay, well the whole church is a secret in God. In the sense that Christ could have been accepted by the Jews and had he been accepted by the Jews then history would have played out line by line, simple syllable by year because it was all mapped out how long time would go on. 5,250 years ever since uh, Psalm 90. It was mapped out. Now, and then each book of the Bible after that would elaborate on that. Like Isaiah 53 takes you year by year from the birth of David to the scheduled birth and death of Christ. Christ was supposed to die in 37 AD, which was the thousandth year of David's death. And the idea was to die by the end of time in the fullness of times, which Ephesians 1 is also referring to. But Paul first talked about it in Galatians 4.4. 4, with, with a very punny uh, reference to the Saturnalia festival using the Greek term for the Saturn god named Kronos. Now all that's really sophisticated, but Greek drama is written this way. Greek writing and rhetoric is this way. It's supposed to be sophisticated. People didn't have TV and smartphones and computers, okay? So what their entertainment was their words. And Musterion was one of those words. Something hidden, okay, like a child is hidden in, uh, in, inside the mother. It's not yet a child, but it can become one. So you want to go, go do all that you can to bring it to term. Because you don't know, and even in pagan culture they did this, you don't know if the gods have a purpose for that fetus to be born. They knew that there was no soul in there. Just like Genesis 2-7 says, 
but they didn't know it was in Genesis 2-7. They knew there was no soul in there. But what if the gods want to put one at birth so you didn't want to get an abortion? But there was no law against it because what if the gods wanted to order one? And God, the God, actually does order an abortion in, in uh, Numbers 5:27. I covered those in videos in my pro-life blasphemy series. It's in uh, episode 9, I think it's 9H. Okay? You can just go look it up in YouTube. So Mustaphelum has a pregnancy connotation. And as any scholar will tell you, Paul, the only virgin apostle, was hung up on making pregnancy analogies. Like in Romans 8, that's all a pregnancy analogy. Okay, Mousterion is one of those terms. Okay, hidden. Not unknown, but hidden. Known to whoever hid it. Like God. Alright, so it's a very definite term for church, and it means fake church. And the very first thing that fake church does is it holds a second council to cannibalize each other and come up with the laws you, you will find if you click on that link. This is vile. This is really nasty stuff. Okay? Christians. The persecution of Christians starts to peak much higher than it ever was ever before in history because of Constantine uniting church and state. Now, he did it in order to get control of the Christians. But, because he's supposedly their patron, he has to let them do a bunch of stuff, and he has to agree to a whole bunch of stuff, and maybe he even agreed with it. I don't know. But the laws are just awful. If you're a pagan, you get, you, eventually, they, they give you the death penalty. If you're a Christian and you don't agree with those Christians, you get the death penalty. You get everything confiscated. You can be skinned alive. All kinds of nasty stuff. Just go read the laws. They're far worse under Constantine than they ever were under Diocletian or any other prior Roman emperor. And they're going to get worse than even this as time passes. So this is fake church. Okay? And a positively A P P O S I T. Apposi apposition you gotta look that word up it means uh, like another title that's similar to the prior title this is the prior title church now the second title that's like a synonym Babylon the Great Babylon means bad I mean hopefully you know that Babylon the Great a horrible place of unity of church and state that's what, you know, the, the kings that ended up becoming Babylon, Babylon, that's how they built their empire. was based on you know, all the Marduk and all these other gods with whatever their names were. They, 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 are, they want us to win. We won because th these gods want us. So it's a unity of church and state. That's why it's called Babylon the Great. <coughs> okay, as a nickname for church. An appositional name for church. A synonymal extra name for church. Okay? And to make sure you know that, he's tagging those syllables that caused the appositional rise of unity of church and state in pagan Rome that Paul is benchmarking. And he's also benchmarking the same term in Matthew. So that when he says Babylon here, you know how to interpret what that means because he's using the same syllable counts 238 syllable count that's in Ephesians 190 which is written before and even before that which is where Ephesians comes from is Matthew 2460 Ephesians is tagging Matthew and so is Revelation 17 right here but it's at a different time period it's 326 Okay, now, between 319 and 326, a whole lot of stuff happens. Okay, he defeats Licinius, who was in the east. He murders him, even though Licinius was Constantine's sister's husband. He murders Licinius, even though he promised he wouldn't. In other words, he defeats him, he captures him, 
his own sister to whom he married Licinius says, oh, please don't kill him. I'm in love with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Constantine says, okay, I won't kill him. And then he turns around and does. That was in 324. Okay, on top of that, Constantine kills his own wife, his own wife now, and his own son Crispus. And then is the stupid council of Nicaea. That's what Babylon the Great is targeting the most. Is the Council of Nicaea. Oh, we're smarter than God. We'll tell you what books are the Bible. And they don't even pick the right books. They don't even know how to tell if a book is from the Bible or not. They didn't know this meter. Honey, can you look at this meter and not know that this is from God? How can you not know? And all you have to do is count syllables, which every five-year-old learns of his own, free, his own tongue. That's what you learn in kindergarten. C spot, C dick, C Jane, C spot run. You're learning how to count syllables that way. Okay, well you count the syllables here and this is what you get. So Constantine murdered his brother-in-law, his wife, and his son, Crispus. He holds the Council of Nicaea and they're murdering the Bible, but claiming that they, you know, that they determine what it was. The only thing that the Catholics really did good about the Bible is they did copy it and they did preserve it. But they didn't know what it was. They were going by what so-and-so said and so-and-so said before so-and-so said and what so-and-so said before so-and-so said. Which means they couldn't read it. Because if they could read it, why couldn't they count the syllables? They're, they they knew, they knew Greek. How would they not know that this is the Word of God? Every single chapter is like this. This is just easier for me to map, because I know the history that's being covered here. But every chapter is this deft. How come they don't know that? And they still don't know that, and this is 2,000 years later, they don't know, but a brain out knows? Okay, so they're Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, it comes next. But I'll, I'll get to that. And then Constantine, all in this same period, starts the construction of New Rome by 326, which is the end of this, 88 plus 238. That's when he starts New Rome, which is in what we today call Istanbul. It used to be called Constantinople, but Constantine didn't call it that. He called it New Rome, and he created the Seven Hills, which is like really famous here in Revelation 17. Seven mountains is how it's usually translated in English Bibles. It really means seven hills. And do you know that the sect around Donald Trump calls itself Seven Mountains? And they think they're building their own new Rome by electing Trump and being around Trump. They're trying to recreate Rome. They're the very epitome of what Constantine is trying to do. And they're the very Babylon blasphemy, fake church, mother of harlots, right behind Donald Trump right now trying to create a new Rome. That's their agenda. Pat Robertson, James Dobson, Ted Cruz, especially Raphael Cruz. You can hear him talk about it in YouTube. Just search on Seven Mountains Raphael Cruz. He'll explain it to you. And he thinks it's biblical. Okay, well, I guess he never read Revelation 17. As you're going to see when we come to the future, future parts of it, where it talks about the seven hills. But see, he starts New Rome. And this is being depicted as Babylon, the great mother of harlots. This is not complimentary to Constantine. Okay? 332, right just before Pornon, just at the start here of the definite article for it. Mother of, what do you want to call it? Fornications. Adulteries would be a better word. Okay? Plural. It's plural. Okay? Just at this point, he, he dedicates New Rome, replete with the seven hills. He actually reconstructed the seven hills in Old Italy, Rome, in the new one, and is what we call today Istanbul, he recreated the seven hills to make it a new Rome. And he dedicated it in 330. And Paul focuses on this very same thing between 320, he uses 320 to 334. 
and our boy is using three to is is using well really starting at 319 so that's close enough to Paul and he's going to 332 not 334 okay the mother of adulteries and of course what does the Catholic call itself mother church yeah it's not the mother of church it's it's the church all right here's a word for church and here's a word for mother but the Bible is saying it's a adulteries and it's not just the Catholics it's now the Protestants because the seven mountains movement behind Trump today are all Protestants they're not Catholics they started with James Robertson and Jim and and Jerry Falwell in 1960 jettisoning and throwing away and pissing on the Bible in favor of politics and making up this brand new lie that oh abortion is murder it's a complete lie and for 3300 years everybody knew that abortion wasn't murder including the Catholic Church they never had a law that's called abortion murder. They didn't advise it. They didn't counsel it. But they didn't have any. They didn't advocate any civil law in the books. It was a spiritual matter between God and you. Yeah, it is. Because you don't know if God wants you to have an abortion or bring it to terms. So you go to God. God determines when life begins, not Caesar. Oh, but these pornographic adulteresses. They want. They want. They want. They want Caesar. So they're the mother of adulteries. And it's commemorated by the dedication of New Rome in what is now called Istanbul. And to commemorate it further, there, that's another listing, the same one that was up here earlier. Okay? They pass all these laws. If you don't agree with our particular version of Christianity, we get to kill you or confiscate your property or beat you up or boil you in oil or stake you. It's horrible. Just horrible. There's no Christ in that. Oh, but it's New Rome. It has nothing to do with Christ. But it's in the name of Christ, the Musterion, the mother of. Yeah, adultery is Babylon the Great. All right, so what comes out of that? Here, well, here's the killer. What comes out of that is Constantine dies. Constantine dies. 337 A.D. at Pentecost. Now, Paul reserves that date for Constantine dying. In Ephesians 1.12 at the... Greek word that Paul uses in 112, two, two verses later, proelpikotas. Proelpikotas means first fruits. He 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 positions the word so that Constantine dies in the middle of it at proel, so he doesn't complete his first fruits. It's a snub. It's an insult. He completes at proel. All right. In syllable 337 of Paul's Ephesians 1. It's Proel, of Proel Picotas. And history tells us that Constantine died on Pentecost. So obviously God foreknew and had Paul time his syllables so he'd get to that point so when Constantine dies. And evidently John knew that because John now parallels the same idea except that he has Constantine, the equivalent for 337 AD in John is right here at abominations in the middle of abominations now remember Diocletian died this is a prior use of the same word see del lug maton abominations you know the abomination of desolation in Daniel 9 same word okay Diocletian dies at the end of the word because his abominations are over but the abominations of Constantine are going to live on so he dies in the middle of the word as an abomination just as much an abomination actually more of an abomination than Diocletian because Diocletian's abominations ended with him the whole everything he fought for everything he tried to gain everything he wanted basically died with him but the abominations of Constantine will live on after him See, it's plural. Abominations of the world. 
so here we got the full fake church Musterion, Babylon the Great, another nickname for fake church, the mother of adulteries or fornications, and of abominations of the earth. And he's make sure you know that by tying it to the Decius persecution at 252 in Ephesians 110. But the text of Ephesians 1.10 is what he wants you to focus on here. The text of Ephesians 1.10 at that point says, In the fullness of times, which is talking about churches, the fullness of times dispensation to settle the angelic trial. Okay? It's a pregnancy word. Another pregnancy word that, that goes with musterion, which Paul had already used in Ephesians 1.9. And if you say, if your head's sort of spinning, it's like that, you know, brain out. There's a lot of information. Yeah. Sorry. You know, you know, put it aside, throw it away, go over it again and again, use one John 1 John 1.9 and talk to, to God about this so you'll see how sophisticated this is. Because this is a way of proving that, yes, this is the Word of God. Because how could somebody be this sophisticated in one verse to cover so much information that's the future of him? I mean, it's 252 years later. All right, Constantine dying here in 337 A.D. Not even the wildest hater of the Bible thinks that Revelation was written that late. So how could they know? And besides, Constantine was a Christian, so why would somebody write a book like Revelation that's anti-Constantine? And obviously the Catholics didn't know or they would have burnt this book. Because they praise Constantine. All right, so Constantine dies in the very middle of, abom of abominations, right here at Ma. And in almost every language known to man, the word Ma means mother. And in fact, in Mandarin Chinese, with the very same accent mark, Ma, that actually means to curse in the second tone. Ma means mother. In almost every language known to man, ma, 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 means mother. So yeah, he's the mother of it. He's the mother of the abominations, which of course is what this finished just saying. See, ma, me, ter, ma, me. Okay? Now, how is it that it starts or continues or births, you know, mothering? A more abominations? Well, let's look. The brothers, they murdered their male rivals by September. Constantine died at Pentecost. By September, their brothers had murdered their male rivals, except for two. Constantine II, one of the kids of Constantine I, he decides he doesn't like his other remaining, the three brothers left. He didn't like one of them. So he goes to war with him. And the guy who went to war with was Constance. And the guy who went to war with his own brother Constance, he dies in 340 by the end of this verse at 3252. So you see? Full of, bla full of abominations of the earth. Because you have to remember, these three guys are controlling Europe, most of, um, you know, all the coastline of Africa. Uh, the western, you know, Anatolia Plateau, a good bit of, of north of there, okay? They control a whole lot of territory at this point, and all the Bibles are located where they are. So if they go to civil war, then my sect doesn't like your sect, so my sect destroys your Bible, and now sooner or later all the Bibles are destroyed, and Satan's just laughing his head off. Is that not an abomination? Christians killing Christians in the name of God. They were fighting allegedly over whether God, over the so-called Arian heresy. What's the definition of God? What's the definition of Trinity and what's the definition of God? May. And Constantine II decides that his definition was better than his brother's definition. He uses that as a pretext to go to war. And he ends up dying first right here at the end okay but that's not all okay I'll tell you later what these things all mean in a minute 
Okay, it goes further from that. Because our next thing, 11 years later, okay, Constance, the guy that was being warred against by this guy, Constance survives it, but he only survives it to 350. san. You know what that means? To get drunk. He dies at U. You know what U means in Greek? Not. I mean, is this clever or what? This is the year that Constans dies. He has control over the Western Empire. And of all the syllables that you could pick to, to indicate him dying, you pick U, which means not, no more, gone, finish doesn't exist. Now that's sort of a neutral thing to say. He died. It's not calling him a, just a Kai and you know sort of like maligning him by calling him a mere Kai. So he might have been a better than normal apostate because they were all apostates. He might have been less apostate. He's just gone. Ooh, no more. Ooh is the, the negation of a fact of existence. Okay, so Constanz dies at 350. That's the penultimate syllable here. He's U. He's no more. Okay, so now Constantius II is the only guy left of the three brothers. Because they've killed all their other rivals, remember. Okay, so now we go nine more years. And now we get to 360. And guess what? We have Kai again. Because 361 is right here. Okay, so Constantius II dies at Kai right here in the next class. So he's another Kai, sir, who becomes just a mere Kai, just a mere connector in history. So this is sort of a condemnation, you know, satirical condemnation against him. And it gets worse from here on out. Because every single ruler after these guys gets more and more religified and needs religion more and more to hold on to their political power and gets more and more nasty with their laws about, oh, if you don't believe with my my Christian sect, then here's what's going to happen to you and you're going to be drawn and quartered and boiled in oil and all kinds of nasty stuff happens from here on out. It gets worse. So... In order to show what gets worse, I had a little timeline that I developed for the Ephesians passage because it says the same thing. And you can read up on how it gets worse because there's a lot of details and independent links there. Okay? Because of persecuting fellow Christians. Now, how does the text about that tie? Well, look. And, see, first of all, and I saw that the woman was drunk out from or born from or due to the blood of the saints yep that's how Constantius too was doing it too his his whole realm was you know anti anti-christian who, who if you're not my Christian sect you then we persecute you and from the blood of the witnesses of Christ yep so you can read up on those details right there. Persecuting fellow Christians. It gets so bad, it's hard to imagine that people could call themselves Christians and yet think that they're holy. But that's exactly what Christ foretold in Matthew 24, which is exactly what this rollout of Revelation 17 is explaining. That the, that the persecutions that Christ warned about are from fake church. It's under Constantine that the persecution of Christians becomes bad. And his sons make it worse. And then his sons die. He doesn't. It's four generation curse. They don't even last for three generations. And then other people that are related or in the periphery take power instead. And they get even worse. So they get drunk. They get drunk on the blood of the saints and on the witnesses for Christ. Notice that you're a saint if you're a believer, but you're not necessarily a witness. You have to mature in Bible to be a witness. But you're still counted holy 
and you can still be a martyr. So there are a lot of martyrs during this time. A lot of them wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them. A few do. But there's a distinction between just being saved, which makes you a saint. Saint means sanctified by the blood of Christ. Um, that's in Hebrews 10.14. Uh, when it says sanctified for all time, that's where the word saint comes from. Okay. Well, anybody, anybody who believes in Christ is sanctified for all time. But to be a witness for Christ, you have to actually know something. Okay. So he's making the distinction between the babies and the mature ones. Okay. So the harlot that's fake church is drunk on both the baby Christians and any mature Christians of which there were very few. And it gets worse after that. Much worse. Okay. Now, I've only gotten to the post-Constantinian period, and my throat's going out again, so I'm going to stop.